In this video, we'll look at uh, some of the basic uh, things you need to know to use time series data in R. So, first of all, I'm going to uh, import some time series data from a CSV file. Now, in fact, this is the data that I used in the, uh, gra uh, the video on uh, plotting graphs previously. So it's data showing European uh, GDP uh, debt ratios um, for a range of countries. So let me use the standard read.csv uh, command to read it in. And there we have, and that's read into a standard data frame. And if we have a look at it, you can see, as we saw in the uh, video on uh, plotting graphs, this has a time variable included. This data was downloaded from the Eurostat site and uh, it includes uh, a time variable. But of course, we don't need that because we're going to convert this data into a time series object, which has an implicit time variable. So that's the first step. Once you've imported your data, if it includes um, a time variable, then you need to exclude that, but you also need to convert it into a time series object and use that using the TS function. TS obviously standing for time series. And the way you do that is you, um, in brackets here, you specify the data set. Now notice here, because it has a time variable in the first column, I need to exclude that by using the comma minus one uh, syntax that we've seen before when we were looking at uh, matrices. Obviously, if there's no time variable in your data set, you don't need to do that. You then specify the start date in this form. Uh, notice that it's a little vector here, the, the year, comma, and then the starting period. And then you tell it whether it's quarterly, as in this case four, uh, or um, monthly, which of course frequency would be 12, and so on. So this is quarterly data running from 2006 quarter one. So I enter that, and that converts my data frame into a time series, a matrix time series, which is a form of data frame. Uh, however, we'll see that Unlike normal data frames, which uh, are also lists, and therefore you can use list notation, because this is a matrix, you have to use matrix notation to access columns and so on. If we have a quick look at that, you'll see that the time variable has disappeared, seemingly. It hasn't, of course, it's there implicitly in the file. So if I print out the uh, data, on the console, you'll see this implicit time variable. And there it is. So by using this notation here, you have this implicit time variable. And the purpose of that, as I explained in the uh, video on plotting, is that that enables uh, various R commands to recognize this as time series and act accordingly. Let me just um, clear the console here. Now the time variable, in fact, that time variable is, uh, you can access it using the uh, function time. So here if I simply use time and then the time series object, time brackets dead, that is in fact the implicit time variable that uh, is included. Um, Notice how it specifies the, the quarters as, as fractions here. Now, in fact, uh, one very useful uh, use for this time variable is as a time trend uh, in a regression. If you're running a regression, uh, a time series regression, and you want a time series, uh, a time trend variable, this time um, function here will return a variable which you can use. There's three other um, functions here which uh, you sometimes use when you're dealing with time series data. If you want to know the start date, you can use the start function. 
If you want to know the end date, use the end function. So you can see my data runs from 2008 quarter one to 2014 quarter three. If you want to know the um, frequency, the periodicity, periodicity of the data, use the frequency function that tells me, of course, the four tells me it's quarterly. So let's look at how to subset and filter this time series object. As it's a matrix, then we can we simply need to use matrix uh, notation that we've used previously. As I said, you can't actually use the list notation here, so you can't use the dollar sign as we saw there on lists. So here I'm first of all going to access column one using the standard matrix style. Don't forget that comma, of course, there. So that, of course, will access the first column, which was Germany. Another way, in fact, you can access a column here, a variable, uh, in a time series object, which you can't do, as, as I'm, I'm pretty certain, in a standard matrix, but you certainly can here, is using this style here. Again, instead of specifying the column number, you can actually specify the variable name, the column name. Now, be very careful here. Uh, R is case sensitive, so you must spell it correctly. So in this case, uh, the variable name is Germany with a capital G, so you must do that. Now this in many ways is a more useful way than specifying the column because it's clear, much more clear what you're accessing. So as you see that will give me the same exact data as before. Obviously you can access more than one variable, more than one column using the, again, the standard way we've looked at before from with the matrix. So here I'm accessing France, UK and USA. Again, it's it's nice to be able to use the variable names rather than the column numbers. Um, and I'm storing those in a, a new time series object, det.2. So that accesses those three. If I look in my environment, you'll see I now have an, an additional matrix time series, det2, containing these three variables. If I print that out, you'll see those three variables have been accessed over the same time period, of course. If I want to access, now you normally want to access columns the, because those are the variables, but you can also access rows, again, using the standard matrix notation. So here you'll see I'm accessing row four, which of course will be 2006 quarter four here. So obviously, as you can see, that's 64.2, 42.5, and 34.8. So that's just using the standard uh, matrix uh, way of accessing columns and rows. What if you want to subset the data to a specific sub-period? That's often what you want to do with time series data. You, you may want to run regression purely on uh, the first half or the second half if you're testing... Uh, parameter stability, for example. How do you subset that? Well, the way you do it with time series is use this window function. So window is the function which enables you to choose just a subset of the variables in a given time period. And you can see it's very similar to the TS um, function in that we have to specify the data frame the time series that you're subsetting from, the start, but in this case, of course, the end, using the same notation, year, comma, and uh, period. So this is going to create another time series object, dot 3 which, which contains the data for France, UK, and USA, but only from 2010, quarter 1, to 2013, quarter 3. If I run that, we now have that additional multi, uh, matrix time series object. If I print it out, I should see it's just those that sub period. So, subsetting, choosing just particular columns or particular rows, or in this case a particular subset of the whole data in a, a given sub subsetted period, is very easy to do. Now. 
the uh, one of the other things you often do, of course, when you're dealing with time series data, particularly in regression analysis and uh, um, vector autoregressive models and cointegration and so on, is that you want to use lags of the data, possibly leads, and also differences. Well, here's how you create lags uh, and leads and differences. The standard way of creating a, a one period lag is simply to use the function lag, specify the data frame. This could, of course, could be the whole data frame here, all three variables, or it could just be one of them, of course, to specify one, use this notation, or probably better this. So this is going to lag all these three variables by one period. Obviously, two periods, you put minus two, and so on. So, so let's find the first lag. So that is that. Obviously, what that means is, for example, that 2010 quarter two should now contain the previous value of 80.7, and indeed it does. So that's been lagged. If you want to create a lead variable, again, of one period, just use plus one rather than minus one. That creates a one period lead variable. What about finding differences? Well, here's the standard full syntax for finding uh, differences. Diff is the function. Then the data, either a single variable or the whole data set. This specifies the um, lag that you're going to do, the difference. So here it's just going to be a simple one period difference. And this tells me whether it's a first or second difference. So in other words, the lag specifies the uh, difference that you're finding. And this differences option tells me, uh, it specifies whether it's first or second differences. So this is simply going to find the standard first difference of the data here in uh, det.3. So if I run that, those are the first differences. Now, if we can check, uh, for example, let's go back to the actual data here. So what's the first difference here in France? Well, it's 83 minus 80.7. So let me just quickly work that out. And the answer is 2.3. I should be able to do that in my head, of course. So let's look back. And there it is, that's the first one. So that is simply the first difference. Now, in fact, first differences are so common, it's often that you simply want the first difference uh, of some data. You can actually do that by simply using the diff command without these values, these, because these are the default values. And as we've seen before with our functions, if you don't specify a particular value for an argument, it uses the default value. So this, in fact, is a much quicker way to find the first difference. So if I run this, I'll get exactly the same figures as here, as you can see. So that's much quicker. If you just want the first difference, don't bother putting this in. However, of course, if you want a seasonal difference uh, and you want a second difference, for example, then you do need to use this full form. So here I'm going to find the... Uh, seasonal uh, difference, a quarterly difference, just on the France data. So this is specifying a lag, a difference between the uh, values in the same quarter in each year. So it's a four period seasonal difference. And I just want the first difference of that. So let me run that. And this is what we get. Now let's check. So if we go back to the data here. OK, so this is going to find the uh, first seasonal difference, a quarterly difference. So for example, the first one should be the difference between 2011 quarter one and 2010 quarter one. So that's 83.3. Eighty point seven, which is two point six. Let's check that, and there we have it. 
So you can see how to find seasonal differences using this lag value here. So those are the ways you find lags, leads and differences. Um, now finally let me mention plotting time series. I did of course cover plotting uh, a set of time series data in the two videos on uh, plotting on, on uh, graphic facilities. Uh, but here I'll just uh, give a quick reminder and also point out some other features that are available. So to plot uh, a time series, of course, you just need to use the command plot because this is a generic function. It recognizes the nature of the object that you supply to it and that it recognizes that this is a time series and plots it accordingly. So this will plot a nice little time graph of the France data. I'm going back to the original data here, uh, not the uh, subset. So it's just debt, not debt point dot three or debt dot two. So that plots the uh, full range of the France data. Now, of course, I showed in the video on uh, plotting graphs how to uh, add a main title and axis labels, and maybe change the axis and add a grid and so on and change the color. You know, there's all the things you can do to make this better looking. So you just look back at those videos to see how to do that. Finally, let me just mention that if you uh, have the forecast package installed. Now I covered installing and using packages in the previous video and I mentioned there that forecast is a particularly good one especially for time series data. So if you um, install that uh, and then let's load it into memory using the library function of course. This then uh, makes available the uh, functions that are in the forecast package which of course you can see by simply going to the help file. Notice there's a tick now because I use libraries to load it into memory. A whole range of really useful commands, uh, including some graphical commands, commands for drawing some right attractive graphs. So, and one of those um, commands is season plot, uh, which will plot the data not over the whole period like this, but it will it will plot the values in each quarter per year as separate lines. So I'll do this for the UK data. And you'll see what I mean. This is the data for uh, the UK plotting the quarterly values per year. Now as that stands, that's uh, uh, needs a lot of work on, of course, to identify what the different years are uh, and so on. Fortunately, um, in the latest version of Forecast, um, there's a, an additional command called GG season plot. Now the GG means that it's going to use GG plot 2 to draw the graph. Now GG plot 2 is a very powerful uh, plotting uh, package uh, which, as it says, creates elegant data visualizations using the grammar of graphics. In other words, it draws very nice looking graphs. It's very powerful. It's becoming uh, very common for people to use ggplot2. Obviously, you need to have this package installed. If you install the forecast package, it will install ggplot as well because it's one of the dependencies. So, and, and in fact, to run this gg season plot, you don't actually have to load ggplot into memory. Uh, the forecast package will uh, load it into memory as required in order to run this um, command. So let's finally run it and you'll see how much better it is than just the normal season plot. And as you can see, it's a very much better, it produces a very nice looking graph, colors the different lines, provides a legend, a better um, axes. You might want to change the head, the uh, main heading here using the main option that we've uh, seen uh, before. But as you can see, that's a nice way of seeing the different seasonal pattern. Okay, so that covers uh, the basics of using time series data in R.